Good morning, everybody, and thank you for tuning into our webinar today. I would like to present our speaker. We're very excited to have him. Craig Grant, CEO of the Real Estate Technology Institute and RETI.US, is one of today's most sought after technology, marketing, and cybersecurity speakers. A 2023 Riz Media Newsmaker in the Futurist category, Craig is currently the lead subject matter expert on NAR's upcoming EPRO rebuild and presents over 150 in-person and virtual speaking engagements around the world each year, including sessions for NAR, state conventions, franchises, CRS, and other key industry events. Whether at an industry event, in the classroom, or online, one thing that fuels Craig is to help today's real estate professionals conquer and embrace their fear of technology, making it work for them instead of against them. As his motto, advanced real estate technology and marketing instructed at a pre-K level states, Craig is able to take extremely complicated topics and present them in a way that the average non-technical person not only understands, but is able to apply to improve their business. Outside of his roles as CEO, consultant, and speaker, Craig is an avid sports fan and music lover who can be found watching and or participating in events and concerts with friends. And with that, I would like to welcome Craig. Thank you for All joining right. us. Thank you so much, Amy, and welcome everyone. And of course, as soon as the mic comes to me, my landscaper is right outside my window. Uh, but welcome, guys, and I uh, hope you are having a great day. Um, what we're going to get into, and by the way, I have worked with LIBOR for many years before, so you may have seen me speak for LIBOR in the past, or for New York, or for Triple Play. I was just there for, I believe, the 10th time. Uh, but Amy read the entire bio, so we don't need to do a whole lot about me. But like you said, my job is, I know I'm definitely a geek, but my job is to make whatever I'm speaking about as easy as possible. So I am open to taking questions from you guys in the chat or the Q&A. Uh, and then one thing I do as a bonus, which you can see up on the screen, is you can download all of these slides. In fact, there's even more than what we're going to show you today because we're really doing a quick little microwave version of this topic. Um, but if you either scan that QR code or go to the link, reti.us slash CG event, they go to both the same place. It's just a simple sign-in form on my site where you just sign into the form and it sends you an email with the link so you can download all of these slides. And again, even more than I'm going to cover. Because what they really wanted me to focus on is really how to use two main tools, ChatGPT and Canva. Uh, and I kind of said, let's work ChatGPT in because to me, it's kind of the perfect marriage. Um, you can do written content and have uh, written content created for you in Canva now but at least in my experience is not as good or robust as you can get in ChatGPT. So to me, it's kind of the perfect marriage of using one for one part, uh, you know, the content creation and ideas, and then going back over to Canva and building everything in there. So to very quickly give you a very fast little intro to ChatGPT if you're not familiar with it. So if you don't know what it is, it's a AI chatbot created by a company called OpenAI. And the main way to use it is going to chat.openai.com. These days, you can install apps on your phones. There's plugins for other companies that are using this tool. But the main way, the easiest way is going directly to the website, chat.openai.com. Um, and this is a tool you can use to create any kind of content you want or edit the content. Written, communications, marketing materials, images, animations, videos, music, code, and a whole lot more. So just as an example, you could very easily use to come up with all your ideas and even create your social media posting content, blog or web page content, video scripts, listing descriptions, ad copy, communication scripts, and a whole lot. Um, so we're going to show you how to do this stuff in just a moment. And just so you know, there is a free account and a paid account. Now I'm going to quickly explain the difference. With a free account, of course, the great part is it's free, right? But the negatives, and there are some main negatives, is first of all, you're never guaranteed the ability to log into your account at any time. You can try to log in any time of the day, any day of the week, and get denied because they're too busy. And you'll try back later and still might get denied. Once you do log in, you're then at the back of the line with the slowest processing speeds. So you might not be able to do a whole lot in there. And sometimes it might error out because you're running so slowly. And you're using version 3.5. And the biggest issue there is it doesn't pull anything newer from the internet than September 30th of 2021. 
uh, and you're not able to use plugins, including some plugins that could have overcome that and other capabilities. So really the free version of ChatGPT is just really text created content. Um, and again, it's September 30th, 2021, nothing current. So it might even create some incorrect or misleading or embarrassing text content at the same time. The paid version is called Plus. It's $20 a month. Um, it's, in my opinion, definitely worth it if you're gonna use this tool and use it a lot, because first of all, you're guaranteed access 24 hours a day at all times and you're running at the fastest possible uh, possible speed. So you're at the front of the line, you're never gonna get rejected to log in or something error out. In fact, it runs so quickly, you could even use it almost like a chat bot, having conversation back and forth. And using version 4.0 instead of 3.5, which means first of all, you can pull current information right up until today from the internet. And you're able to kind of a big thing here is you are able to use third-party plugins to do a lot of cool things, and recently they've added in the ability to use Dolly. Dolly is this company's image generation tool. So we can create pictures and animations and videos and slide decks and a whole lot more in ChatGPT now where you could not just a month ago. Uh, and it definitely does really track your historical usage of the tool, starts learning your persona, and that way it creates content in your image and your brand and tone. Okay, so that is kind of a big thing. So as I mentioned, to me, I'm still heavily using ChatGPT, especially on the content, creating content and idea side, and then going to Canva to build stuff out. And I'll show you in a minute what I mean by just the capabilities and the qualities a little bit stronger in ChatGPT than it is in Canva for ideas and content. But again, the big focus of this hour is Canva. And Canva is, in my opinion, I've said it for a long time, it's been my favorite tool for years. I'm in Canva every single day, really designing everything in my marketing and business life in Canva. So for example, on the graphic design side, you can design your own business cards, flyers, brochures, social media posts or online advertisements, postcards, animations, videos, and a whole lot more. Okay, really, you could design anything you want without any design skills. I'm going to show that in just a moment. And if you're not aware of this, about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, Canva also rolled out uh, an office suite. So you can create Word documents, slide deck presentations, spreadsheets, and more inside of Canva as well. So it's no longer just graphic design. You can also use it as your office suite as well. Now, is it as strong or powerful as Microsoft Office or Google Docs or Microsoft or Apple's iWorks? No, it's not as powerful from the office standpoint. But a lot of people have canceled some of those accounts because it does do a lot of the same kind of functionality, okay? So again, we can design anything we want in our marketing life. And we can also use it as an office suite as we want to as well. But here's the beautiful part about Canva. No matter what you're wanting to design, so this is an example not just of an eight and a half by 11 print flyer, but of a flyer in the real estate category. So for industries like real estate, they have their own library of templates. There are hundreds and hundreds of templates for you to choose from, no matter what you're designing, whether it's the business card, the flyers, social media post, whatever, tailored for real estate. Or you can go into the generic library if you want to, if you don't want it to be very real estate looking. But the beauty of it is you find a layout or design that you like, you click on it, it moves over to the main design area or editing area, and you make whatever little changes you want without any design skills. So for example, right now, this template has four different pictures of a property that's not my listing. Well, I could just upload four of my pictures up into my account and drag them to those four boxes. If I don't like the dark red background, I just click on the background and choose the color I like, or I'm gonna show you how to create your brand so it automatically can have your company colors or your personal brand coloring and everything. If I don't like the wording at the very bottom along the footer, and I wanna change that to information about my address of my listing and information, I just click on that text and type what I'd rather have there. So the beauty of Canva is the amazing library of these templates that are created by professional artists that work for Canva. So it's pretty hard to ugly something up or screw up a design if you stick to the templates. You start adding in a lot more, yeah, you can ugly something up. But as long as you kind of work off of the template or even create your own templates, 
Canva is so easy to use to have a nice, clean, consistent look with modern designs, okay? And then the other amazing part about Canva, and I'll say other, we're gonna talk about a lot of amazing things with Canva in this hour, um, is the gigantic media library. So you can go searching through millions of pictures, video clips, music, animations, uh, custom fonts and you know elements and all kinds of cool things to add into your designs. So you don't have to go searching on the internet to find a picture or go set up your own photo shoot. You can go through the library and have the rights to use these pictures in your marketing materials. And by the way, I'm gonna explain in a moment the difference between a free Canva account and a paid one. But the biggest thing is with a free account, anytime you go looking in the media library, the majority of the stuff in there is gonna cost you a dollar to buy the rights to use it. So for example, if I want a picture of one of those children, I'd probably have to pay a dollar if I want to use any of those pictures of those children, right? If I had a paid account, I would have to worry about buying anything out of the media library. But having this all built in is an awesome thing. And once you learn how to edit and design the real estate flyer, it'd be no different than designing a social media post or a video or anything else. The editor always looks almost identical no matter what you're designing, even for videos. So I'm sure for a lot of you, you've had to like, you know, struggle to learning how to use different kinds of software to do different kind of things. The editor in Canva always looks very, very same and consistent. So once you learn how to design one thing, you can really design anything you want. That's the beauty of it. And as I mentioned, there is a free account with Canva and there's also a paid account. The paid account is called Pro. It's $120 a year. And as I mentioned, the first big thing with the paid account is you never have to worry about having to pay for any upgrades or little one-offs or pictures or videos or anything in the media library. Everything in Canva is automatically included, no upcharges if you have a paid account, unless you want to do like professional printing or things like that, okay? And you have a lot of advanced tools that aren't in a free account, such as a background remover, a whole library of custom effects and smart mock-up and several other things. So you do have some additional tools to help you design and build things in Canva with a paid account. But the biggest thing is what is called Magic Studio. And Magic Studio is literally less than two months old. It came out, I believe, the week before Thanksgiving. And I'm about to show you what Magic Studio is. It's pretty incredible. But again, this is pretty new. And one of the other things that's pretty amazing about Canva, that $120 a year price, which I say all the time is probably the easiest $120 you should spend every year, other than your dues and your RPAC donations, is buying a Canva Pro account. That $120 price is the same price it was five years ago. So even though they keep making this program better and adding in the Office Suite, and now the Magic Studio AI Suite, they have not increased that price one cent. It's pretty incredible, okay? So as I mentioned, the new big thing with Canva is the Magic Studio AI Suite. And AI, I'm sure you know, stands for artificial intelligence. So the majority of the tools I'm about to show you did not exist two months ago. Again, this is all new and pretty incredible. Now, by the way, this video does move a little bit quick going through these tools, but I'm gonna go through them one by one once the video's over.
pretty impressive. I'm sure you agree. And again, I know a lot of that moves very quickly. So I'm about to go through each one of them kind of one by one. Uh, and if you are a Canva user, just to kind of point this out, right away on your home screen is always that little bar below all of the different things you can design that's trying to promote and tell you about some of the new cool features in there. So a lot of stuff I'm about to show you, again, is right away on your home screen. All right, so let's kind of start looking at some of these tools individually. The first one being Brand Hub. And Brand Hub is pretty awesome. You just got to go in one time and create your brand. In other words, upload your logo, and it does support more than one logo. So if you have a company logo and also your own personal agent logo, it can handle creating more than one brand. So once we upload a logo in here, what it does within seconds is break the logo up and figure out every color that's using your logo and makes a whole kind of color band out of that. Um, then it also identifies the fonts you use in your logo. And then that way, anytime you go create a new design, you can, within one click, apply your brand to any design. So if you guys can see in that kind of top right screenshot, there's a little color swatch with like the blue, the white, the gray, the black. Well, those are my company colors. And I could just click on that little box of those little color strips and say, redesign that design into my colors in one click. So once you create your brand, it makes it very easy for you to do so. All right, the next item is MagicWrite. And MagicWrite is very similar to ChatGPT functionality to write and create content for you right inside of Canva. But as I mentioned, to me, at least at this point, it's not as good or powerful as a tool like ChatGPT, or if you're a Google fan, Google Bard, to me, they're better. Okay, at creating content, but MagicWrite is built in here and it even does have a feature called in your brand voice, which is it learns your persona and then will write content to match your brand the way you like to have content written. Another tool, which is pretty amazing, and I'm gonna show you this one when we start demoing is called Magic Switch. Magic Switch does three different things. The first one is you can redesign whatever you're designing into different sizes in seconds. So for example, right now that design is an Instagram post. It's 1080 by 1080. But I could click on magic switch and say, let's also make other versions of this layout for Facebook, for LinkedIn, and let's also do a print postcard. And all of a sudden you'll see three more tabs opening up with those designs redesigned for three more sizes. And by the way, if I have a whole screen of designs, let's say that I had 50 designs in this screen, it would make three new tabs with 50 more of each, 50 more for Facebook, 50 more for LinkedIn, and 50 postcards in seconds. So this tool can allow you to do an entire year's worth of content in literally seconds. I'm gonna teach you how to do it. Another tool under Magic Switch, is Magic Translate. So for example, right now, all of those designs for Instagram are done in English. Well, I could click on Magic Switch and choose Translate, and then choose from over 50 different languages, I think it's even more than 50, that I can translate this into. So you could say, let's do this entire thing, redesign for Spanish, for Portuguese, Italian, Russian, whatever language you want it to be in. It'll open up another tab, and now I'd see 50 new designs done in Russian or in Italian, whatever language I chose. Again, now we can create mass amounts of content, even for multiple languages. And a third tool we can do, it can also convert the design into a text document. So it'll just strip all the words out and dump it into a document. Another pretty cool tool is Magic Media. So Magic Media allows you to create pictures, animations and videos right inside of Canva. So if any of you guys are using other tools for image generation, such as Dolly, such as Mid Journey or any other ones out there, you don't have to leave Canva anymore. Now you can generate your own pictures and videos right inside of here with your own crops. You can say what kind of picture you want, it'll create it custom just for you. There's also Magic Animate. So let's say you're trying to build an entire video or a slide deck. 
And you don't want to have to sit there and click and figure out every little animation and movement. You click on Magic Animate, it'll do it all for you in seconds. Magic Design for video is pretty darn impressive. You can literally generate the entire video using artificial intelligence. You could say, scene one, I want a video clip of a couple running on the beach holding hands at sunset. Scene two, I want the same couple at the kitchen table having breakfast together talking. Scene three, I want them celebrating in front of a house with a sold sign, right? It'll not only make all three scenes for you using AI, if you add a song into it, it'll even time each scene time uh, based on the song, everything. So Magic Video is pretty amazing. Magic Edit, also amazing. Right now that person's holding a black handbag. Let's change it, remove it and change it into this orange handbag or not a handbag, let's make it where they're holding a bouquet of flowers. So it allows you to remove or change anything in a picture. By the way, without these kinds of tools, this is very advanced work that would take a normal designer a lot of time and skill to do. You also have Magic Expand, where you can take a picture and make it bigger. So for example, let's say you took a picture with your phone and you took it in vertical orientation, and now you want to do a horizontal video, well, that picture is or video is going to look horrible. You can use Magic Expand and say, expand it to fit up the entire screen. And it won't just add stuff to the outside. It'll give you scenes to choose from. For example, when I first time I tested this out, I had an image of the word social media graffitied on a brick wall. And I thought it was just going to add more bricks to the left and right to fill up the space. No, it created whole new scenes for me to choose from. One scene, it looked like it was in an alley with a steel doorway. Another scene had people walking on the street like it was a busy city street. I mean, it literally created entire new scenes to fill up the space. Magic grab, let's pick that girl up and move her over. And only were we able to pick her up and move her and resize her, but the, the wall behind her where she was is now fixed. It still looks completely normal. All the shading and everything looks right. Right, so Magic Grab allows you to pick anything up and move it around and, and it'll fix wherever area you took it from. Magic Morph allows you to take any two-dimensional item and make it three-dimensional so it pops. So we're gonna take that heart and make it a three-dimensional heart. And then Magic Design might be the craziest of all of them because it literally allows you to do the entire design without you spending a single second. You just give it a description of what you want. You say, I want to do this as a print flyer or an Instagram post or whatever, and use my colors and my brand, and how it builds the entire design for you. Of course, you can go in and edit or change things, but it does the entire mock-up in seconds. You can even do the same thing for entire slide deck presentations. You can just give it a description of what kind of slide deck you want, or you can give it an outline, it'll build a slide deck off of your outline. And then lastly is Bulk Create. And Bulk Create is not really an AI tool, uh, but it's to me probably their sneakiest, one of their best tools. Because this is the, and I'm gonna teach you how to do this in a moment when we go out and start demoing things. This is what really gives you the capability of taking one thing and turning it into an entire year's worth of content is the bulk create tool. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean in two seconds about that. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to switch gears from the slide deck presentation over to the browser. And we're gonna show you some of these tools, kind of demo them and show you how you can reutilize them in your business. All right, so. Now we are, once it goes, there we go. All right, now you should be seeing the browser and right now I have ChatGPT up, okay? So I'm just kind of showing you, first of all, the kind of capabilities. And I'm gonna show you the exact same prompt what it kicked out in Canva, how it's just not as good. To me, again, content and ideas is still better in ChatGPT. Maybe that'll change over time, but I'm still using ChatGPT for this and then designing stuff over in Canva. So the prompt that I did, 
was provide a list of titles a real estate professional should blog about if they're trying to increase their SEO score, which means I'm trying to do better on search engines like Google, right? For the top 52 reasons why a potential home buyer would want to relocate to the greater Long Island, New York area, and be sure to focus on the area's culture, natural resources, educational systems, and affordable housing options, right? So that was the prompt. I asked it to give me 52 different titles of ideas I should blog about if I want to do better on search engines for someone moving to Long Island area. And this is what it kicked out. A really nice list of 52 different ideas I should blog about. Now, by the way, if you're wondering why I gave 52, uh, the number I gave was 52, because there are 52 weeks in the year. So what I'm gonna teach you right now is how literally to do multiple things with this list, including getting your entire year's worth of blogging done in seconds, okay? All right, so we now have a list of 52 different titles. Now, for a trick I'm gonna teach you, I just know this from experience. I'm just gonna add in another prompt just to clean up the list. I don't want the numbers and the dots. I don't want the quotes around each title for, for another thing I'm gonna teach you to do. So I just did, I'm do, about to do another prompt. Please rewrite this list to remove the item number and quotation marks around each blog post title. So I'm gonna do that. It's gonna say, sure, not a problem. And it's just gonna kick out the exact same list without all the numbers and the quotes around it. That's for a trick I'm gonna teach you in just a moment. Okay, so we're just gonna wait for that to finish running. But all it's doing very quickly is cleaning up that list for me. So once this is done, what my next prompt is about to be. Is, and this is one of the reasons why for content and ideas, I'm a much bigger fan of ChatGPT over Canvas so far. Is I'm gonna, the next prompt I'm gonna ask it to do is now go write me the article. Not just give me a list of titles, go write me the actual article. So my next prompt's gonna be, now write a two to three paragraph blog article intended to reach first time home buyers factoring in SEO for the Long Island, New York real estate market for idea number one in the list. So it literally is gonna remember the entire list, right? And actually let's change that to idea number 13 just to show you how it really knows the list, right? So we're gonna ask it to write us an article for idea number 13 on the list. It's going to say, sure, here comes my article. Now, if I had tried that one in Canva, it would not remember what number 13 is in the list or number one or any of them. Like it really doesn't do a good job in what are called sequences when one prompt can build on a previous prompt. But as you can see here, here's idea number 13 and our entire article is now being written for us in what, 20 seconds? Okay. And just to show you, I'm going to copy back in the same prompt and say, now do idea number 18. So the idea is we could do our entire years with the blog articles in under 10 minutes just by repeating that same question over and over. Now I now do it for number 19, now 20, now 21. And here's our whole year's worth of articles. Okay. And by the way, the little icon at the bottom here that looks like a uh, clipboard is your copy button. So if I wanna copy this and go paste it into a Word document or onto my website or whatever, I would just click on that little clipboard, okay? But it's not just can we get our blogs created here. Let's go to the next step. Again, it still remembers our list of 52 ideas. So the next prompt I'm doing is now create a 90 second YouTube video script for idea number 23 in the list. So now within seconds, we're gonna have a whole video script. And you can see it's not just taking that article and turning it into a video. It literally says opening shot, a scenic Long Island waterfront view. Narrator comes in and says this. It's literally mapping out a 90 second video I should create. So just like we repeated, write me the articles 52 times in a row, 
we could do the same thing with our video scripts and maybe carve out an afternoon to record our entire year's worth of videos out of that same list of reasons to move to Long Island. Is this kind of making sense to you guys? Again, Canva can't do this. It can't do sequences where one question builds on another question. But ChatGPT is fantastic at it, okay? So plus to me, the content is just better. So as I mentioned, I'm still using ChatGPT to come up with ideas and content, and then I'm going over to Canva to build it. All right, so that was just kind of demo how to come up with ideas, how to create content. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go over to Canva. And before I go there, I'm just gonna very quickly use that little list that we cleaned up and copy it, which I'm gonna use in a, in a minute or two, okay? So if you've never been to Canva, first of all, you can use Canva on a web on a computer by going to the website, canva.com. You can install a desktop app on your computer and tablets if you want to, or there are apps for your mobile devices. So Canva really can be used on any device to design anything you want in your business. As you can see up here, I can design any kind of office document. I can do slide deck presentations, all different forms and sites for social media, videos. I mean, there's all different kinds of things. I can do print products. I can even build websites and landing pages in here. Canva really has become a one-stop shop to design anything you want in your business. So if you aren't familiar with it, my recommendation would be check it out. But what we're gonna do very quickly, and I've already mocked this up for you guys, is let's just add this back in very quickly. And we wanna make that white just so it pops and stands out. But I've already mocked up this Instagram post design for reasons to move to Long Island, okay? So what I'm about to teach you is a newer tool, the last one I mentioned when I went through all the Canvas suite, a tool called Bulk Create. So what Bulk Create allows us to do is take a list of things and mass create content in seconds. So the way to use Bulk Create, is you do have to go one time over to the left side of Canva and click on the button called Apps. And once you get to the app screen, you'll see the very first one in the top row, right, is called Bulk Create. It looks like two little boxes on top of each other with a plus sign, okay? So we click on the Bulk Create button and what it does, it'll then add it into your left rail at all times. Once we do this, we never have to go back to apps ever again but we do have to add bulk create into our account one time. So now I'm gonna click on bulk create, right? And it gives us two different options. Either we could enter data in manually or we could upload a CSV file. So I could have taken that list, dropped it into a spreadsheet and saved it as a CSV file. But just as quickly, we can just copy and paste this in. We don't need this column. We'll get rid of it. All right, so I just pasted in our 52 different ideas that we had ChatGPT create for us for our blog ideas, right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to this box of text that we created and click on it. And we click on this little three dot menu. And now we just click on this option called connect data. And if I do that, I see the field for reasons that I created. Boom. Okay. And now you can see it's already kind of said there's our first one is discover Long Island's rich cultural uh, tapestry, right? I'm going to click on the continue button. And now we see the list of all 52 ideas. And now if I click on the button at the bottom called generate 52 designs, guess what it's gonna do? It's now creating 52 different Instagram posts for me with every idea out of that list in seconds. 
Now we can see here, I probably would have wanted to make that font a little bit smaller because some of them have a little bit tough time fitting because I didn't, I would have checked that first, right? But now our entire year's worth of Instagram posts are done in seconds. And just so we know, um, another trick I'm gonna show you, remember we talked about creating our brand, right? Well, this is just an example. Let's say my brand colors are this one right here. I can click on this and it'll redesign any design I'm clicking on in seconds and rotate through my different brand colors into different spots. So if you're worried about everything looking exactly the same, you can do this and change out stuff in seconds. That's a little bit hard to see. We'll change him. Okay. But creating an entire campaign in seconds for the whole year, we just did, okay? But now let's go the next step. Now we have these 52 different Instagram posts, right? Awesome. But now we can click on magic switch at the top. And now we can say, all right, now let's go with the Facebook post, the LinkedIn post, and a postcard. And now what it's going, and I could have chosen all kinds of different things. I just had those already ready to go, right? But now what it's going to do it's going to now redesign all 52 of these three more times. One for Facebook, one for uh, LinkedIn, and one for a postcard. So here's our about to be our postcard design. Here's our LinkedIn. And again, I would have taken a little bit of time to clean these up, but so quickly, we've now created a whole year's worth of content for four different channels, for Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn and postcards. Pretty awesome, right? But we're not done. Now we can go back to any of these. Let's say we go back to the original Instagram one. We're going to click on magic switch again. Come on. Go away. All right. And now we're going to choose translate. So give me a language in the chat you would like to see this redesign to. You can see it's got tons of languages. All right, I see Spanish. So it asked me, do I want to do this without creating the copy? No, I want another version of these in Spanish. So I'm not going to check that box. I'll do Chinese next when, not a problem. You know, you can only do one language at a time. Just so you guys know, you can't select multiple. But now let's check out our 52 Instagram posts done in Spanish. Pretty awesome, right? Now let's go back and do it in Chinese. All right, so we're gonna go with, there's either simplified or traditional, we'll go with traditional. I don't know the difference, but I'm sure one might be able to help us out here, see if it's good. And here's our 52 Instagram posts now done in traditional Chinese. Okay. So if you are trying to work with or target a foreign market or just foreign speakers, this is an incredible tool. It really, really is. Right. And again, combining this with the bulk create tool. Now we're, we've now created what over 400 different pieces of content in the last five minutes. Are you guys getting this? Okay, 
it is pretty, pretty incredible what these tools are doing. All right. Another way, by the way, I, I believe that real estate is, should be, if you're doing it, um, should be both kind of long-term and short-term. I mean, you're not just trying to promote properties. You got to promote yourself. You got to promote your brand. You should have multiple different things going on at all times to promote yourself out to your communities. So another way to, I recommend to kind of um, really kind of get the best out of it, out of the bulk create tool and this is an example of a testimonial campaign, right? So let me just very quickly, I forgot to keep get my testimonials up and running for me. I just got to copy them in real fast. So I'm sure all of you have at some point gotten some testimonials out of your clients. So we're gonna show you how to put them into action. All right, so we're gonna do the exact same trick using bulk create, but I'm gonna show you another way to do it, okay? So we are going to enter these in manually. I'm gonna very quickly go up and just change. And we'll get rid of that row that was the those headers. All right, so now we've brought in all of our testimonials from a spreadsheet, just copy and paste them in. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this add image tool and it adds another column for pictures. And by the way, I'm showing this as a testimonial, but you could have 52 different pictures of Long Island instead of people. But I'm now going to click on each person and give them a picture of, of a different person. All right, so now every person has a picture as well. So we've already done the connect each field to their different places. Oh, I don't think when this one's connected, so let's redo that one. And by the way, you can see over on the left, each of the items has a check mark, seeing they've all been mapped to an area. So we have their first name here, last name there, status of their buyer or seller here, and their testimonial in the middle. And now I'm gonna click, yes, I wanna connect these. And now it's going to create 10 different posts of my client testimonials, even with their pictures in there. Now, because it's a frame, I just have to very quickly give that frame a color background. That's just because I used the frame there, right? But so quickly, we now have an entire thing with their names, their testimonial in there, everything. And again, I'm showing this as testimonials, but I could have done the same kind of thing by using, you know, pictures of Long Island area or whatever, instead of their personal pictures. But these tools, again, are very new and they're pretty incredible. <laughs> All right, let's show you some other tools or tricks we can do in here. Um, Abdul, I'm not sure if they're recording this or not. That might be a question for uh, the LIBOR team. Yes, this is being recorded. There's your answer. All right. Let me just find some of the designs I'm working on right now.
All right, so I'm just going to make a copy of one of these very quickly, just so we can kind of show you some cool capabilities. All right, so first of all, like I mentioned, and actually, let's just put in a blank. There we go. All right, so as I mentioned, one of their big advantages of Canva is the uh, media library. So you can pull in again, millions of pictures, video clips, stuff like that, and pull them in very quickly and easily into anything you're designing. So let's just say I want the picture of this uh, mom and daughter, right? Well, this is a picture. So I'm going to click on the edit photo button in the top left corner. And there's all kinds of, again, some of the tools that I explained earlier are here. So for example, I can say background remover get rid of the background. I just want the mom and her daughter. That's it, right? I can do magic expand. Let's make this fit the entire page. I probably shouldn't have knocked out the background before I did that, but oh well. It all did was just make give me a blank black black background, but not exactly the most creative thing ever. Let's you let's go back and redo that. Now we'll do the magic expand. So those color variations in the background, a lot, I mean, if you try to just stretch the picture, or whatever, that would not look good, but it's gonna make it where it really does look good and match, even though we're gonna go full screen. There we go. Okay, like that one better. We'll stick with that. You also have other tools. Like Magic Eraser. Maybe I don't like that blue pop thing, you know, that for on the back of the phone. Not only could I erase it, Come on. This is the problem with live demos. It does not want to remove that. It's kind of weird. I've done Magic Racer many times where it's much better than that. Uh, but anyway, there's all these different tools where I can pick up and move them, remove. I should have been able to change that pop to a totally different thing if I wanted to, right? Or even change their clothing. That might be a better way to show this. So not only am I going to just change her shirt, let's change it. We're going to change her shirt to a black power suit. 
And that's basically what it's going to do. It's going to swap out her pink t-shirt for more of a power suit. little time to do these things. But again, these tools are pretty easy to use. Yeah, I should have deleted more. It's only replacing part of her with this power suit. Let's not worry about that. Um, but again, I can do all kinds of things like this in here. And then when it comes to image generation, by the way, again, we can create our own. So I just clicked on elements and then create our own. So let's create a picture. And we can do this either with a picture or video if I click on that tab. Man and woman talking at the breakfast table. And then we choose, do we want this to be filmic, watercolor, photo, dreamy, anime? So let's go with photo. We want it to be pretty realistic. And we're going to go with it as landscape. And it's going to generate pictures for me of a man and a woman at the breakfast table. So again, a lot of, before this, you had to go to a whole different program to create pictures, to do these kinds of tricks. Now, all of this stuff is built right into Canva Pro. Again, you do need to have a paid account, the $120 a year account, but to me, it is 100% worth it. Now let's move them over. We'll use Magic Grab to move the mom and the daughter over. Separate them from the background. They're not going fast today. What happens we do live demos? So we're just going to move the mom and the daughter over to make room for the picture of the man and the woman at the table. Okay, so again, there's all kinds. I could go on and on with all the cool effects and filters and different tricks and tools that are in here. But my biggest advice would be one, get the Canva Pro account. Again, to me, it's just an amazing tool and just start practicing and playing. And there are tons of how-to videos on the Canva website, out on YouTube, and also my team, my site, RTI, we cover Canva and ChatGPT a lot, okay? So there's a lot of ways you can learn how to do these things. Because I saw a couple of you guys say, it'd be awesome if this could be in the classroom. That could happen next year, right? Um, but also there are tons of resources to help you learn how to use a lot of these tools. All right, I think we're kind of at that five minute mark. I know we I saw a couple of things in the chat, but why don't we uh, open it up to any questions or anything you guys might have? Anyone? Are you guys just either blown away or just ready to get to hit the holidays? All right, Natasha asked, can I review bulk create quickly? Sure, and by the way, if you do download the entire slide deck guys that I gave you, I'll give you a link to that again. I do have the step-by-step -step instructions how to use bulk create, but let me just kind of quickly go over it again. So let's just do a new design. Nope, anyone, that one, that one's already met. All right, so we're just gonna add that text field back in really quickly.
All right. So step number one of bulk create is again, you have a list already either in a list you can copy and paste in, or you save a CSV file in any spreadsheet program, such as Excel or Google Sheets or anything like that. So you either have a list you can copy and paste in, or you have a CSV file. Then we come into Canva. If you've never used this tool before, you got to click on apps and then click on the bulk create button. That then adds it over to the left side for you. Then we can just come in and again, paste that stuff in manual is probably the fastest way to do this. Okay. Then we come over to the text field or whatever it is you want to bring that information into. We click on it. We click on a little three dot menu. And then we click on connect data. We then choose which field we want there. And then we can say, and you can see now there's a check mark over in the left for the field of name. And then we would say continue. And it would now start pulling in their names into that field. Again, that would have been our 52 reasons. I just pop pasted in something different. So it brought in the people's names. All right. But now once we're done, we would say generate the 11 designs and that would create 11 new designs. All right. Can you, okay, I just did that one. All right, Jennifer asked, with the 52 weeks, how do you schedule the contents to go out weekly? So first of all, Canva does have a scheduling tool. So we can come in here and say share on right here under under share is a schedule button. We can do it right from here. Or a lot of times the social media, some sites ha themselves have a scheduling tool or there are outside programs like Buffer or Hootsuite that allow you to schedule things. Me personally, I don't advise you to schedule from the outside, right? Whether it's Canva or any other tool because social media sites definitely pay attention to where you are when you're doing your posting and are you active and on the site? So you really don't want to post from the outside and schedule things. What you would want to do is create a folder on your computer, on your phone, whatever, and have these 52 images ready to go. So every week you can post them while you're in the website or the app. That's what it, you would get the best value of, not scheduling and not doing something in the outside. But if from a time management standpoint, you have to schedule, Again, there is a tool right here, or you could, again, use the tools in the different social media sites and do it that way. All right, Karen asks, can you please go over how do I create my brand? Much appreciated. Sure. So we got to go back to the main canvas screen and there's a button on the, on the main left part of your screen called brand. So here you would just say, add a new, you give it a name. Let's say you work for Remax. And then I could just upload the logo for Remax and it would figure out the colors. I can create my own color palette if I want to. I can choose all my different fonts I like. I can create my brand voice so it writes content in my image, right? I can do all of these things on this screen but again, from the home screen, you click on brand. Then you say, you click on the little add a new brand and start creating your brand. All right, any other questions, guys? Okay, Amy, you wanna wrap us up? Great, thank you so much. Um, that was an awesome presentation. I'm thank a huge you. Canva fan myself and definitely picked up some great tips that I'm excited to you, so I'm sure everybody else as well. Um, next week, we'll be featuring Heather Haas, who, who will be presenting on how not to be a robot in a digital world. and how Great to session, by the way. Connections <laughs> uh, via the internet. Um, to sign up, head over to lirealtor.com forward slash webinars, where you can also visit to view all the past webinar recordings. This one with Craig will also be on the website. So if you missed it, if you want to revisit it, head there. Um, and have a great day. We'll see you all next time. Thank you so much, Craig. Absolutely. Happy holidays, everyone. And I just put the link in the chat if you do want the slide deck again. Thank you, guys. Thank you.